Hey everyone, we welcome you all into this exciting episode as we try to put this late 20th century guild guitar back into playing shape. Stay tuned. So once again, thanks for joining us here at Mazako Guitars. I'm Ryan Mazako, working here at uh, Mazako Guitars, actually working through Palin Music Center right now in Joplin, Missouri. Come check us out, uh, take care of all of your musical gear needs. And uh, what we got here is a uh, 1997 Guild JF30. It's got a few problems. Uh, it's a really pretty guitar, uh, you'll see, but it's got some issues that makes it just flat unplayable. So uh, we're going to try to get it all fixed up for the customer who really loves this guitar. Uh, it's got some issues. We're going to go ahead and take a look at some of these right now. So uh, just looking it over very briefly, you can see, I mean, it's a, it's a beautiful guitar, really pretty uh, flame maple grain. The neck is just incredible. Uh, I love that flame in that maple neck. It's three-piece neck. Uh, it's probably a walnut or mahogany uh, strip down the middle. And... Um, Otherwise in pretty good shape. It has a little bit of a crack here, uh, but I checked that out already and that really seems to be just a surface crack. Uh, so it doesn't go all the way through. We're not going to worry about that at this time, but uh, it's probably something that may need to be addressed later. Uh, we also have some fret wear that's pretty significant. Um, also that we're not going to worry about at this time. So it seems kind of strange. We have uh, a crack in the top and we have fret wear. Uh, but those aren't the things that we're going to worry about right now because this guitar actually has some much more serious issues. Um, you know, usually you have a sound hole, and a nice perfect sound hole that you can see very easily, but when you look at this one here, you can see right in the... Uh, you can see right in this area where the soundboard starts to protrude into the sound hole. Uh, quite significantly and there's also cracks right along here um, the uh, little purfling strips in the rosette they're all starting to crumple up and pull in with the force um, you can see the crack running all the way along the fretboard on both sides and then the binding is caving in and even cracking starting to crack here and here so what we've got going on here is this guitar, whether it was uh, subjected to some sort of trauma or whether it was a joint failure, um, somewhere along there the glue gave way, something happened to this guitar so that the uh, head block probably came loose and then this section of the top that's underneath the fretboard, uh, there's, there's nothing uh, to support that and so you have Depending on what gauge of strings they put on here, you can have anywhere from, you know, probably 150 pounds of pressure um, just pulling on that. And without that support, the top is not made to be able to survive that kind of stress. Uh, so what it does, it just cracks right along the grain lines at the weakest point, and it just starts to pull in so that the whole neck is actually starting to pull in toward the bridge. And that's what we've got here. So, um... What we're going to have to do here is uh, just take a measurement real quick here. You see, uh, let's see, this is not completely tuned up to pitch, but still, it's a pretty good indicator here. We have our string gauge, we put it on there. Well, this goes up to 140 thousandths, and it's just, it's off the charts. Not even close. So we can tell that our neck angle is bad. So, um, this is going to have to be a, uh, unfortunately, we're going to have to do a neck reset on this one. But, it's not just a normal neck reset. Because we've also got the issue with everything on the top being caved in. Which, um, I'm sure is actually contributing significantly to the bad neck angle. I mean, if everything is pulling forward, then... If your block didn't come off on the back, but it only came loose on the top, well then the whole thing is going to shift like this. So that's going to cause your neck angle to raise up like that. And so um, is, we're going to have to address both issues here. 
it could be that if it had never broken, then this wouldn't need a neck reset. And so part of me is kind of hesitant to just go ahead and do a neck reset um, because we don't know for sure that that is the problem. It could be if we just get everything realigned back where it's supposed to be, then it'll just pop right back where it is. Also, there's a complication of go ahead and put everything back where it is, put the neck back on, and then we have a bad neck angle, and then we have to do it again. Well, I'm going to try to avoid that, um, try to test it as much as I can to make sure we have a good neck angle so that when we do put the neck back on, um, it's going to be a good fit, a good angle, first try. That's always what you want to try to do. The other problem is that this is a Guild guitar. Now, I've got nothing against Guild guitars. I like them. I like Guild guitars a lot. I think they make a really good guitar. They're good and solid. They sound great. Um, they play great. One thing that they don't do great is they don't make them so that the necks come off easily. In fact, if you rush it, if you don't do it quite right, um, you can have problems where you start to uh, break up the glue joints that are already in there that are still good and solid. Um, you can even do something like uh, put too much stress on the heel of the neck and you can even break it off. Don't ask me how I know that unfortunately is one of those cases so we're going to have to proceed with caution here um, I'm never excited about I've got somebody looking at me through the, my door window here hey come in here What's up? so this is my buddy Ty he works here at Palin Music Center that's, he's the lead salesman that's right yeah youngest in company history that's no, <laughs> so uh, hey if you guys have any uh, gear needs new guitars drums amps pedals this is the guy to talk to. Love to see you. Yep. Come in, stop by, show me some of your favorite memes. Yep. It was great to see you, Ty. Yeah, great. Get out of here. All right, you're going to be seeing a lot of him. So, anyway, um, yeah, we're definitely we're going to have to uh, do some work here. One of the reasons I wanted to go ahead and take the neck off is because it's it's going to make it easier to realign the head block and the bracing with the top and get everything back into the position the way it's supposed to be and then we'll check the neck angle and see what we need to do uh, some of you out there watching may disagree i don't blame you i'm not 100 percent certain on this course of action either so but we're just going to do it we're going to go and uh Let's see how it happens. All right, so first of all, we're going to go ahead and do a little bit of investigating here. We're going to take the strings off and take a look inside. So first, let's go ahead and take a look inside and see just exactly what we're dealing with here. All right, so, hey, how you doing? So what we see here is something that I was hoping we wouldn't see, but here's what it is. And it kind of makes sense though because the guitar was strung up and it wasn't continuing to collapse on itself, um, which means that some work had been done. So what we've got here, you can see I take this, uh, this little pallet knife and the idea was I was going to go ahead and stick this under, under here and see exactly where it was loose and see where we needed to fix the joint um, but as it turns out I can't get the pallet knife underneath this brace as I expected I would be able to and that's because uh, if you look at it from you can't quite see it from that camera angle but right here there's a bunch of glue just spilling out so uh, somebody has made an attempt to go ahead and fix this and also this right here um, this here is a little piece of spruce going cross grain that um, is glued on here to try to, to, to sure up where this crack is right here and that's why you can't see the crack on this side is because it's underneath this piece of spruce uh, you can clearly see it over on this side where it's protruding into the sound hole in the crack right there and no attempt was made to um, reinforce that. Whether they put glue in there and it just didn't hold, I'm not sure, but you can see it clearly moves. Um, so 
that's a weak spot right there as well everything is solid underneath the fretboard up into the head block um, which is just going to make things that much more difficult so I'm really looking forward to that uh, it's also another reason why I think it's probably a good idea to go ahead and take the neck off that way we don't have it in the way uh, we can see what's going on under there and we can really try to do the best job that I can to fix this right I can't really tell if there's anything underneath the the head block itself and I'm sure I've got my big fat hand in the way now and you can't see anything uh, yeah I'm not able to get my palette knife underneath the head block either so I think it's all come away in fact I'm also wondering if instead of coming away from the top if it actually came away from the side let me see if I can put my palette knife in there yeah it doesn't feel like I'm able to get it in there but I do feel so I can't see it I'm just feeling it with the palette knife and it feels like there's some glue squeeze out along the edge and I don't know if that's original from the factory or if that was also uh, part of this uh, repair that was done before so we're gonna go ahead and get out of here and we're gonna go ahead and start getting um, steaming the neck off all right so the first thing I'm going to do here is while I'm letting my iron heat up I'm going to score along the uh, edges of the fretboard and the back of the heel uh, that way when we go to do the rest of this neck removal procedure um, we can try to avoid cracking and damaging any of the finish at least as little as possible now I know it may seem silly to worry about trying to score this line right here and on this side because the fretboard is actually cracked uh, right along that space but we still need to try to get some separation here to get our palette knives in there and uh, the it doesn't actually crack until just proud of the fretboard so we really need to get in there close and tight especially in areas right here where you can see the finish is already starting to come off a little bit right here just because of uh, the stress on what the the neck is doing here uh, with everything being shifted so if we were to leave this and then just go ahead and try to pop it off then I would expect that this whole section of finish is just going to go flying off now the reason the guild neck is so difficult is because think about a Martin or Gibson neck you have the profile here um, where you know sort of like that stiletto heel kind of profile a lot of times or it's just much narrower down here at the bottom but instead what you have on a guild is this big wide block on the bottom and they do glue the inside of the, the cheeks of the heel on the inside they put glue all over that and just smash it down so not only do you have the regular dovetail joint on the inside that you've got to deal with which is normal um, you also have this massive glue joint and you've got to try to break up all of that glue on the inside of there to get this off and it's rough So if you can see right here, we've also got the binding. Uh, not only is it crushed in, but it's also separating. See, I can put the tip of my knife right in here. So that's something that'll have to be fixed as well. It's doing that on both sides. Now, one thing I don't want to do at this point is introduce too much moisture underneath the fretboard. Uh, I want to try to, to get this off mostly with heat and but in case I need it I've also got a little pipette with some water in it uh, that way I can control it and 
not get water all over the place. So let's go ahead and start the heating process. I'm not breaking any new ground here. If you are a student of Lou 3, you've seen this a hundred times before. We're just going to get this fretboard extension good and hot. Alright, so we're going to check this here. That's pretty warm. So I like to start out with a small knife here. Sometimes I'll heat it just a little bit. Don't want to get too much because you can scorch the finish on here. So it's going to... Ooh. See if we can get here into the corner. Yeah, there we go. I'm getting started. So you can see another problem that I'm having to deal with here is where this is cracked on each side of the sound hole, there's definitely not any support underneath it, even though there's the bracing, but still, as I try to wiggle this knife underneath the fretboard, I can see the spruce actually going up and down in between these two cracks. So I've got to be careful that I don't put any too much pressure downward uh, so that I actually break this part of the spruce off and it falls down into the sound hole. And also trying to keep that level so I don't dig down into the spruce. You know, I always have a tendency to kind of try to angle the knife up just a little bit so that it wants to follow the harder wood of the rosewood instead of dig down into the spruce. So it's really a balancing act right now. So this has actually taken quite a bit longer than it normally does or no longer than it should. Um, a lot of times there comes a point where all of a sudden you feel like, okay, it's going now. And I think we're at that point right now. So uh, I spent quite a bit of time just trying to get it uh, softened up and broken up around the edges. And now I think we're on the downhill slide. All right, so we've got the fretboard extension loose. I do anticipate that we went down into the spruce just a little bit, like I say, because of the unevenness uh, in the top itself. Um, so there's probably gonna be a little bit of patchwork that we'll need to do uh, before we can glue it back on. But now we're gonna go ahead and move on to the next step, which is uh, the really fun part and we're going to go ahead and try to steam this neck off. So the first thing we're going to do, we're going to pop out this uh, 15th fret right here. So I got my soldering iron, it's good and hot. And we will just heat that up. And we're just doing this to loosen up any glue that they may have used inside here to make the removal of this fret just a little bit easier. Now the reason we are taking out the 15th fret is because the dovetail joint sits in here and the dovetail comes out about this far and so right underneath this 15th fret uh, should be the pocket where the glue joint is for us to be able to uh, get in there. Okay. It actually came out really nice, uh, very minimal, if any, chipping, so that's good. So now what I'm going to do here is I am going to take and put a little blue mark 
on the underneath side of the treble side. That way I know when I go to put it back in that it goes like this instead of putting it in backwards um, just in case there is an issue with the fret being level after that. All right, so then the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to drill a hole right through here. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and put it just offset and angle it in just a little bit just to uh, so I can hit that right into that pocket where the dovetail sits and that's where all the glue is. And there it is. That is the pocket. I hit it. I know it because as soon as I got through the fretboard and then just a little bitty layer of spruce, it just went right down because I hit a big pocket and nothing. So I'll just take and we'll put this right like that as soon as we get our steam going. And uh, here's how we're going to do our steam. I've got a espresso machine by Mr. Coffee and I've already got it filled up with water. Go ahead and turn it on to the steam setting and it's just going to start pumping out that steam through this hose and out through the needle. So again here, the prospect of taking off a neck a lot of times is something that uh, I enjoy. I have to say I am not looking forward to this job right now because of the neck joint that the guilds have here. Um, past experience that I've had with them, it's always a big job, way harder than uh, it really needs to be. Uh, and so far it has been so what I've done on this guitar um, but uh, you know there's only one way to do it and so that's what we're going to do and you can see why it's so much more difficult because you have this great big block here and they don't just glue the dovetail joint on the inside where I'm about to steam out but they also just slather the back of this block with glue and that's glued right onto the body and then the finish is all over it. So that's why the finish is so thick right here in this corner is because the the neck is finished on the body as opposed to like say how Martin does it where they finish them separately and then um, attach the neck to the body. So it's one of the greatest things about um, Martin style guitars and other guitars that do the things the way that they do is that they're way easier to take off. Uh, having said all of that, the whole thing could be avoided by having a, an adjustable bolt-on neck um, like a few guitars that I've heard of before, um, namely the Mazako guitars have an adjustable bolt-on neck and so none of this ever has to happen. You can just adjust the neck yourself and it's way easier. It's steaming and there's quite a bit of water coming out through here so I want to kind of wait till a lot of that wet water stops shooting out and we have mostly just steam. Yeah there we go we're getting pretty good now. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn this up on its side that way it's not just pointing straight down because um, that kind of tends to let more water come out. Whereas if I hold it up, you can see there's a lot less water coming out and it's more steam. So here we go. All right, so the good news is the steam is coming out through the bottom of the heel. In fact, I just burnt myself because I didn't expect it to be there. So that means that that steam is getting into the heel this could actually be way easier than I was expecting it to, which would be great. Uh, the other thing you got to look for is it looks like steam is coming out between the heel cap and the heel itself. So that heel cap could very well come off. If it does, it's not a problem. We can just glue it back on. In fact, it's definitely going to come off. Okay, I'm going to pull this out because that's a lot of steam.
So with that heel cap coming off, I'm going to use that to my advantage so that I can actually get a pallet knife in between the bottom of the heel and the body and then hopefully that's going to create some separation. And if it's a little noisier, I did turn my fan up because with all that hot steam going in this little room, it got hot. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and drill a hole in the other side now. Um, this can help because sometimes it may allow the steam to vent all the way through and then have a place for it to come back out instead of everything just pouring on the inside. Uh, and then also it's another point for me to, uh, to inject the steam because it seems like over on this side we are having a little bit more separation than we are on that side. So I'm going to kind of try to kill two birds with one stone here. Alright, so the steam has worked its way out through the bottom of the heel here from the other side and it did have to work its way through so it looks like I ate up a bunch of that glue that was uh, keeping that steam from getting to this side. And at a certain point you kind of just got to start working it like it's a loose tooth. Now I'll tell you, what you don't want to do right now is break this heel. Alright, so I'm deep enough, I might be up against the bottom of the dovetail now, so start working the sides of it. And there it is. Wow. So as far as what did we do here? Yeah, we chewed this up pretty good right here. Uh, and just dug down underneath that. So we'll have to clean that up. Uh, put a little patch in here. I actually got one of the pieces of spruce out. Kept it. Saved it. So we'll be able to patch that back in. Alright, so I'm just going to hang that up back here for right now. And uh, not really going to do anything else with the neck. I want to give it some time to dry out. We put a lot of moisture in there, so. Yeah, it is. You're looking rough. <laughs> it was rough. Was it really as bad as you said it was going to be? Yeah. That sucks. But I didn't break it. That's good. Yeah. So I got all the big globs of gooey glue stuff mostly taken off. Um, all right, now let's revisit the issue at hand here. Um, remember before when we started this, I was saying that I couldn't get my pallet knife under there and I'm not sure if we just loosened up some of the glue or if uh, it was the, the pressure of the fretboard not letting it down but as you can see pallet knife fits right underneath that upper face brace now um, in fact it goes all the way from 
where they have this little patch. You remember that patch was there all the way over to this side and even just a bit past that crack. So that is going to need re-glued uh, in order for this to stay put when we put the neck back on and put strings on it. Otherwise it's just going to do this same thing all over again. So another thing I'm going to do is if you remember that uh, little patch that we had right here um, I'm going to go ahead and take that off for right now. We may put something back in there before um, this is all done just to kind of reinforce this area where those those cracks were but for right now I do believe it's going to be in my way so I'm going to take that out and so what I'm going to do I still have my iron on over here I'm going to put this on my hot iron and then I'm going to put that on the bottom side of that patch and just let the heat transfer from the pallet knife through the wood. I'll try to do this without burning myself. That's a good way. Just drop it. All right. I mean, it's already loose on one side, so it's kind of not really doing anything anyway at this point. I'll take my small palette knife. I'll see if I can just slip it under and that that's the easiest thing I've done all day so you can see it was just a cross grain piece that went right in that sound hole it's a good idea um, probably something that they should have done probably something they should have done on the other side too uh, but as it is for right now I've got to work with all of this so it needed to come out so now with that patch out of the way I can see that so here's the crack right here and the pallet knife does go past that crack underneath the bracing so it's loose about from here to here is really where it's loose so that brace right there is doing nothing. Can you see that? I don't know if you can see that wiggle or not. Get it a little closer, but so it just wiggles. And that's no good. So one of the things I'm going to do is I'm going to try to see if I can get this all to come back up where it's supposed to be. I'm not sure if it's just smashed now and there's no way of getting it back. Uh, because this here is really close it's still out a little bit so so we finally got the neck off and we're starting to reinforce everything in here and put the the block assembly all back together and I'm only just now realizing this is too much for one video so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and stop now call this part one and then I'm gonna go ahead and get started right now on part two and I hope that you'll uh, join me back here next time as we get started on that and putting this all back together, getting it ready to put the neck back on. If you have enjoyed what you've seen so far, um, be sure and hit that subscribe button, hit the like and the little bell to get your notifications to know when new videos come out. That way you don't miss part two or three or four or wherever this ends up taking us and uh, any other videos that may come in the future. Again, thanks for watching.